Welcome to this episode. In my last episode, we talked about how you can deploy your Azure data services anywhere. And to have some fun, we deployed it on AWS. This episode, I want to talk to you how thanks to Azure Arc, you can manage VMs anywhere. Could be in any cloud platform, could be in your own premises or with a partner. So let's dive right into it, what the benefits of it. So here we are in the Azure portal. And we can go very easily to Azure Arc by searching for it. Then you see here that we have Manage Servers, which is currently in public preview. We have Manage Kubernetes, which is in private preview. And the data services I showed you last week is also in private preview. So today we're going to talk about servers. So let's jump into Manage Servers. Here we see all our Arc servers. You see some that are online, some that are disconnected. You see one here that runs on an Azure stack and the other ones just run anywhere on lab machines from our engineering team. Now, when you click on any of these machines, you get a very familiar view where you have an activity log, you have access control, you can set tags. I show you why that matters. And you can check, for example, policies, if it applies with your company wide policies or not and mitigate it right from here. Now let's assume you're an IT administrator and you manage lots of different VMs. And usually you would log in to different tools to figure that out. And here, thanks to the tags, you can very easily set a tag here in this case, owner chain or whatever you want to set for yourself. And then use the explorer graph to search and run queries against the full environment. And again, here, that means you have all VMs anywhere. It could be Google, AWS, Hoster, on-premises, on your laptop, wherever. And let me show you how easy it is to onboard a new machine to get all this beauty out of it. For that, let's jump over to AWS, create a new instance. We're going to search for Windows here. Take the Windows base. Go forward. Let's see, we're going to launch. We take existing pair, launch the instance. While AWS is deploying the VM, let's head back to the Azure portal. The Azure portal, I go to the Azure Arc blade and then click here on the plus to add a new server to it. Here I can create a script. You see there were two methods, one to do it at scale and one with the interactive script generation. Here I select which subscription I want to add it to. Then which resource group I want to add it to. And then in which region. Let's use West US 2 and it's a Windows. Then if we would have, we could add proxy server information. In our case, we don't. So I click next. And here I can add write a tag. So let me add here one tag owner. Make myself the owner of it review it and basically generate it. So this down here is the script. I can download it or I can copy it into my clipboard right away. Let's go back to AWS, see if he deployed it. Here we have one. We're going to click and connect, download the remote desktop file. Make sure we get the password here. Oh, it says we have to wait four minutes. So I guess we wait four minutes and I then fast forward in the video. While the resource is being deployed on AWS, let me show you how Arc actually blocks into Azure. When you look at this graphic, how you read it is from the left, you have customers, yourself or me. We have different methods to access Azure or the Azure world. We can use the portal, we can use shell, bash, command line, many different tools to do it. Then on the right, we have the Azure Resource Manager, who really is the coordinator of everything that is happening in Azure. He is the manager between the resource provider, which could be VM, storage, pass services. 
and who has access, where does it run, where is it located and so on. Now with Azure Arc, as you can see to the right, we can plug in VMs or servers, it's not just limited to VMs, could be also bare metal servers, from anywhere into ARM. And with that, you get basically that subscription. That's why we had to select the subscription it runs to. We have the policy, as I've shown you, we get the tags and much more. You also see here the icon for the database and the Kubernetes. Now the real beauty is that if you do that, let's say you have one team that is using a line of business application on AWS. But you still want to be able to enforce policies across and you want to be able to have the inventory and search across it. You actually don't just go there and say let's add Arc to these VMs and then say now you have to learn Azure Bash and new tools or anything, not at all. They can still use their existing tools while you still get that access. Think about all the vSphere installation out there. You don't force your vSphere people to learn something new. They can still use their local native tools while you as central IT still get that one single pane of glass, if you will, for governance and all the VMs, all the servers, anywhere at any location for Windows as well as for Linux. Now let's head back to AWS and see if it's, our password is ready. Let's try again. Look at this. Decrypt the password. Here we go. Here we're ready. So let's quickly. PowerShell is admin. Copy paste the script. Start the execution of the script. While it's downloading the package and makes all the configuration, I'm already going to deactivate the enhanced security feature of the Internet Explorer because we're going to need that one in a second. So let's head over to the server manager. There we go. Enhanced security configuration. Off for administrator. Okay, can minimize this. We can open this one. You'll see once the script is successfully run its course and deployed, it still wants me to authenticate with my corporate identity or my Azure subscription credentials to make sure I really do want to onboard and I have the authority to onboard this machine. Again, this is because of the method I chosen with adding a single machine versus doing it at scale. Now you see that onboarding is happening, but he asks me to use the device login here to basically onboard. So we're going to go here to microsoft.com slash device login, enter the code. Enter my work credentials and that's it. So now it's already connected. So let me jump over to the Azure portal. Here we go. Go to the machine arc place. Let's refresh it. And here we go. Here we see the EC2 machine is connected. IS demo. It's a resource group. Let's see if it took the tag. You see it's the owner DK tag. And now the cool thing is that I wanted to show you is if we go here to the Explorer graph, the graph explorer, we can technically start a query with the owner tag. Here it's owner DK, run this query. And now here we see the EC2 machine that I've just added, which is now in here. And what is also cool, if it's part of a bigger solution that I've built, I can also go there through the resource groups. So if I go in my resource group view and select here only the internal one where I added it with the IS demo, 
Then you will see here the machine alongside all the other machines I have in that resource group. So you see it's super easy and you can get started today. It's in public preview. Anything I've done right now is possible for you. Create that script, onboard your machine, tag them, search for them, manage them, apply policy to them, see if they conform with the policy you set, all by making no disruptions to the teams that may have their own tools that they're using. And the best of it all is if you're a Windows Server guy, it's domain agnostic. So even if you have a lot of other companies or if you have merchant acquisition, this will be the easiest place to get started and bring it all under one umbrella to get you that single pane of glass of all your servers anywhere. And with that, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch today's episode. I hope it was helpful. I look forward as usual for your comments and have a great week. Thank you.